Now today in the radiology spotter series that we do in dams through the our YouTube channel I'll discuss a important cerebellar lesion called as Elhermit Duclos disease. The name is very peculiar and you know it's very important for a resident to know it's very commonly asked as a spotter to radiology residents sometimes asked as a multiple choice question to PG aspirants USMLE aspirants what what are we looking at So let us see the classical radiological features This is a T2 weighted MRI of the patient T2 weighted MRI of the brain you can see the bone is dark the fat appears white this is the cerebellum this is the lesion on one side of the cerebellar hemisphere you see a lesion which is t2 hyper intense on the left in the left cerebellar hemisphere which is hyper intense on a t2 weighted image what is the outstanding feature that you see outstanding feature of this lesion is the preserved striations can you see the striated appearance now sometimes you call this as a striated appearance sometimes we say uh tigroid appearance in a lesion this appearance is typical of a dysplastic cerebellar gangliocytoma also called as l hermit duclos tumor this lesions usually would be hypo intense on a t1 weighted image usually would not show contrast enhancement that would clinch the diagnosis the key thing about this lesion is that this is a hamartomatous lesion this is not a neoplastic lesion it is actually a uh, hamartomatous enlargement of the granular layer of the cerebellar hemisphere you can see granular so the preserved striations that you see here are the typical feature these are the two take home messages that you need to remember that this is a dysplastic cerebellar gangliocytoma it is not neoplastic it is hamartomatous in nature and the tigroid and the striated appearance on one side in the cerebellar hemisphere with no enhancement is the typical radiological feature the key thing that you should remember about this disease is its association with a syndrome of multiple hamartomas called as cordens syndrome that is the key thing to remember it is associated with cordens syndrome and please remember the cordens syndrome although is associated with hamartomata hamartomas in skin and mucous membrane can also be associated with malignancies like endometrial malignancy renal cell cancer so that is the key thing about this benign cerebellar lesion the association with cordon syndrome thank you very much i hope you enjoy this episode of radiology spotter series and make sure that you follow us on dams daily channel on youtube for more such educational videos